Do you know what is the power to weight ratio and why it's important in cycling? What if I tell you that we are calculating wrong this ratio? I think that this ratio should be 10% lower. Why? Allow me to explain. Hello, I'm Gabriel and welcome to Cycling After 40. Let's start by understanding what is power to weight. In short, the power to weight ratio refers to the correlation between your cycling power and body weight. Measured in watts produced per kilogram of body weight, it offers a method to compare different riders' capabilities than by just examining power alone. While larger riders typically have more power than smaller riders, in absolute terms, light riders require less energy to move themselves forward, particularly uphill. Why is watts per kilogram important in cycling? For cycling on flat roads or trails, watts per kilogram holds little significance. The rider with the highest absolute power will generally go faster on flat terrain. However, for athletes who often cycle in highly areas, participate in climbing events or wish to improve sprinting abilities, watts per kilogram should be a main focus. To calculate your power to weight ratio is very easy. All you need is your FTP value and weight. Divide power by weight and you'll get your power to weight ratio. <laughs> Simple, right? For example, if your FTP is 200 watts and your weight is 65 kilograms, your power to weight ratio is 3.1. For other values for FTP and weight, I made this chart with a sample range. Remember this, the power to weight ratio is one of the key metrics that determines how quickly a cyclist can climb uphill. Your power to weight ratio really starts to affect performance when climbing because when you climb, gravity becomes the primary hindrance to your forward motion. The amount of gravitational force you need to surpass relies on your total body weight. Keep this in mind, the total body weight. For example, a 60 kg individual generating 300 watts, equivalent to 5 watts per kilogram, will result in a quicker ascent up the hill compared to an 80 kg person generating 300 watts. Now, I'm not going into details about how to calculate your FTP. Usually, this is done indoors on a stationary bike and using an app like Zwift, Wahoo or MyWish. I will leave a link down in the description if you want to find more about FTP. Instead, I will go into details about weight. Let's take back from our mind the total body weight. Because most of the time we test ourselves indoors to find our FTP, we only take into account our weight, just the weight. No matter what app are you using for indoor training, when you will create a new account, the weight value will be asked to be inserted by the app. Is this correct and in line with your real performance? I will say no. I think that we should take into account also the bicycle weight, not to mention the water bottles that we have with us. When we are outside and climbing, all these weights will impact our power to weight ratio. When we climb, we have to carry with us the weight of the bicycle. If you find this content useful and you want to boost my morale, please subscribe, like and share. Thank you. To give you an example, let's say that we have a cyclist with an FTP of 200 watts and a body weight of 75 kilograms. In this case, the power to weight ratio is around 3.3 watts per kilogram. Let's add the bicycle weight, around 8 kilograms and 2 bottles of water, 500 grams each, so another kilogram. All in all, in total, the weight is 84 kilograms. Now, if we are doing the calculation, we have a power to weight ratio of around 3 watts per kilogram which is around 10% lower. This is huge. And in the case of changing your bicycle, either buying or trying a new one, this calculation will change. The heavier the bicycle, the lower the power to weight ratio will be. I did test myself indoors and prepared off season only indoors. And I used only my body weight when I calculated the power to weight ratio. I used these wrong calculations and values in the past when going outside, riding or competing in challenges. I am using a bicycle computer which can show me in real time the watts per kilogram and I was looking to match my power delivered based on this wrong calculation. 
I was in a situation where I was producing X amount of power, reading on my bicycle computer the power to weight value and moving slower than I was expecting. Basically, I was sure and relying that I could deliver more power than I was capable of in reality because of this wrong calculation. Because of the wrong input, I would get the wrong output. There must be a clear separation between indoor training and outdoor performance and expectations. So, what I want to say in conclusion is that for calculating the power to weight ratio, we should take into account the body weight, the weight of the bicycle, the weight of the bottles, shoes, socks, clothes, eyewear, helmet, and any other things that we might carry with us. In this scenario, we will have closer to reality values for the power to weight ratio. What do you think? Is my assumption correct? Let's discuss this in the comment section. Thank you for watching and till the next time, let's spin the wheels.